So our plus two takeaway tonight is going to be something new. And Scott, I've been talking about this book for a really long time because I've read it, The One Thing. The Surprising Simple Truth Behind Extraordinary Results. Gary Keller, who happens to have an active Google presence. Today we're going to start with the setup, and our plus two takeaway will focus on this. And when we're thinking about the setup, we really can think about what this one thing means. And if you were really to narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down, you've got you and you have your dreams. And at the place they overlap is really the place where you can dive into that one thing. And so everything in that little bit of overlap are the things that will carry you forward with momentum. It ensures that you're clear about what you want and that you stay clear about what you want. And even if it seems ambiguous, it feels right depending on what your learning style or approach to life is. And ultimately, it's an opportunity to grow because you're always pushing yourself a little bit more. If we are focusing on the things that create momentum, if we're increasing our productivity, we're able to, ha we're, we're actually going to increase our confidence and we're going to have a lot more motivation to do more of the things that are going to continue to propel us forward. You know it when it's the right thing. It either becomes clear when you're working it out in whatever you use me, it's paper and sticky notes. It's that aha moment. Oh yeah, that's it. So when it feels good and it makes things easy to work on, that means that everything is going to fall into place and you know you're on this right path. And one thing that they use in this book that I love is the domino effect. The whole idea being that a little action can actually start carrying momentum so when it starts to fall, it hits that next domino and it can actually, in it, the momentum that it gets as it's falling down, it can knock down a domino twice its size. So if you, then you have a little one and then it's not so big. So you have this exponential growth in what you can do. So that momentum is really powerful and all of those things add up. So then we quoted Gary because I thought it was important. This is one of, this is a question that I live by. When I sit down and I do my planning, I ask, what is the one thing I can do right now that if I did it, it would make everything easier or unnecessary? Technology allows us to change what we are able to focus on to, to work on different things when we are working on our business, when we're working on our career, and to actually feel good and feel like we have the space to go learn more and to go take on more to really get us where we want to go. And Stephen Colbert actually dubbed a word called truthiness. And that's when we know, we think we know enough to make really good decisions, but it turns out that we know enough to launch from the wrong place. And so it's enough to be dangerous. And what I, th I thought that was really interesting is because we tend to act on our beliefs. And what that means is that um, we're we think we're moving forward when in reality we might be holding ourselves back. So that takes us into the first lie. Everything matters equally, which is my favorite. Because you know everything that's important is always urgent and everything that urgent is always important and just because you're doing things means you're productive because productivity is actually directly related to activity <laughs> nah. <laughs> and so one of the things that this book talks about is that we get stuck in this hamster wheel type place of doing this activity and that everything is urgent and so we have to go 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 when in reality stop take a step back decide what is the priority. Where are we working from? That way we can actually, instead of having a to-do list, which I'm moving away from, we actually have a success list. This is where we're thinking of 20% of your effort gets 80% of your results. And so that actually gets into how we actually think about this and how do we work and how do we work to to actually decide what is a priority. Well, we have to look at everything on our to-do list and we have to say, okay, we have all of these things and then we have to decide how can we whittle it down and how can we whittle it down. This is go small. This is be extreme. This is say no a lot because as much as we want to love ourselves and love everybody else and, and be a global citizen, we can only do that 
to a certain amount before it starts to get in our way and we're not working on our our one thing we're not putting in our time to craft our skill we're not putting in the time to actually get us where we're trying to go in our goal time frames and so that takes us into lie number two somewhere along the line we're gonna learn that multitasking isn't really real and I think everybody that's watching our show has learned that and has seen that um, and believes that because every time you actually change what you're doing it takes an energy and so multitasking is not free it is not free in any sense of the word at all and so we know that multitasking is not free because what it ends up doing is requires us to take the time to change which means in the time that we're required to change we're not spending that time on the things that we want to be moving forward to. So when we think about a disciplined life, that's a bunch of lists and a bunch of habits and a bunch of things that actually talk about not being distracted or multitasking, if you will. And so if you choose to be disciplined, that actually could be problematic because then you've scheduled, there's a possibility to have scheduled so much time that there's no room for silence there's no room for space and there's no room for that creative creative energy of all the stuff that's being absorbed all the time from conversation from news feeds from our Google Plus interactions the hangouts like this one that you're watching to actually integrate into what's in your being and actually come out as something that helps you get to where you're going so we have to choose we have to completely be selective about what we're disciplined in and and be purposeful. We don't have to do everything. We have to do the right things. And that is a quote directly from the book. And so then we can go to the last one, which is down in the L, Scott, which is um, when we are selective about the skills that we build. And it doesn't matter which process you learn to build a skill or make a habit. Some say 21 days, some say 90 days, some say everywhere in the middle. If you average all those together, you get this magic number of 66 days. So which, find the program that works for you for building a habit, but don't do it for two or three things at once. Pick one at a time. So if you have 66 days, that's just over two months. So you can get six new habits in a year that are actually powerful, that can propel your life forward, that actually build on each other. And if you, um, and I'm going to go reference last week to the domino effect, where you have a little domino and you have one really good habit. And once you have that in place, you now have, you're doing more of the right things, not all of the things. And then you learn a new skill and your second domino is twice as tall and your third domino is twice as tall as that and that little domino and that first action can actually continue to knock over progressively larger dominoes in this exponential effect so by going small by doing one thing at a time we are actually able to get more done make better habits to keep us on our one thing and our one thing could be anything we actually are, we might have a one thing for our business. We might have a one thing for our family. We might have a one thing for our hobbies or the organizations that we volunteer with. We all, all of those things, when you look at them, there's probably a common thing, which is the one thing of your life. And so something to consider if you're incrementally improving one at a time, every one of those areas will benefit without taking away from the other and attributing to your whole story whatever you want that to be and whatever you're applying the ideas from this book to. So the first one if you would zoom into that one Scott is talking about willpower. One of the things that we think about is that we expect when we are ready to work we will have the energy and the focus and the drive to do that work. Turns out it's not always the case. And in fact, it turns out most of the time it's not the case. So when we think about it, if you're knocking on the door, hey, let's go, let's go, I'm really excited, but nobody's home, where do you end up? You know, sometimes we eat potato chips, sometimes we watch TV, sometimes we garden, sometimes we read a book, whatever that case may be, but we're not doing the work we would like to be doing towards our one thing and taking the actions that we want to be taking. They did a lot of tests. They talk about a lot of research and a lot of tests in this book. Some of you might be familiar with the marshmallow test where a researcher gave a group of students a choice between one marshmallow now or two marshmallows later if they could sit and look at the marshmallows until the researcher came back. 
And they've actually followed those kids all the way through their lives. And what they found out was that some people inherently can't wait, and some people inherently can wait, even if it takes them a long time and they have to distract themselves along the way. And what they found is the people that, those groups, they didn't change very much over time. The waiters in this group, three out of ten were successful in waiting until the researcher came back. And so that tells us a lot uh, in terms of our willpower. It was the right time at that moment or they these, these kids inherently have this skill. So is it something we can learn? Yes. But what does that tell us about our willpower? It means that we need to know how our bodies work so that we can tap in to doing the work that propels us on our one thing, whatever that one thing might be. It could be work, it could be family, it could be a hobby or a playtime activity, it could be anything, right? One-fifth of all the calories we use is used by our brain hiding right up here underneath our hair and our skull. How crazy is that? So we really need to honor, we need to honor our, our brains and say, okay, when do we have the most energy? And for some of us it's in the morning, some of us it's in the afternoon. There are a lot of things to keep in mind, but understanding that it's not always there gives us a chance to step back and look and observe. When do we have the most energy? When do we have the most willpower available to us so that we can dive right into the things that we want? Because once that willpower is gone, we have to recharge just like our phones. Um, they run out of juice, you plug them back in and they recharge. So if we're not taking the time to recharge during the day or we're unable to on a day, we need to keep that in mind because there's no need to beat ourselves up for the fact we're not getting stuff done. We need to honor the fact that we've done as much as we could on the energy that we have spent or with the energy that we have spent. Then we can jump right into a balanced life. Now this cracks me up. This is a word that I've decided to change. I, this book says a balanced life is a flat out lie. Okay, So if it's a flat out lie and you can't have a balanced life, what does that mean? One of two things. It means if you're really going to be extraordinary and you're really going to step out of what you're what you're doing to get your dreams and go for it you're not going to have balance because there is no way to be out there getting your dreams and keeping track of and paying attention to all the other stuff too so anytime we're focusing our attention on anything something else isn't getting that attention so whether you call it unserved you know left behind whatever you want to call it it's true and so one of the things they talk about is they talk about a counterbalance they taught um, in this book, and so you're not trying to find balance because balance in the end is actually mediocrity. And who wants to be mediocre? Not this lady right here. And I think I can speak for Scott and Jason. Probably not them too. When we're out there doing that thing, when we come back, how we can balance those out so we take the time to spend on the priorities that we want in the time frames that we allow for. What it really talks about is the challenge of how much to spend on each one of those priorities because if you're giving yourself some amount of time to master some skill or some new thing you know how much time it's going to take for you to master that and so where's it going to come from in your 24 hours a day with the amount of time you have available where are you going to carve that time from and being able to balance and know and I love this little guy not because of his bow tie but because of the two things you can see you can see the dotted line and then you can see the red curved line so they're always interchanging and you're always going out to things and you're always coming back to things so that's where counterbalance versus balance is actually a very valuable thing to think of so if you're th looking for balance it's almost like you're in the desert walking towards mirage and it, it never gets any closer and that's where it is with balance. So you end up knocking your head against the wall, you get frustrated, you get stuck and not a good place to be. And things will take over. When you are working on your business and you're going, this is my dream, this is what I want, other parts of your business aren't going to get the attention they need. No. Give yourself a process and a tool to be able to look at what you're doing easily so that if you do get stuck, it's easy to go outside and bring somebody in, a friend, a colleague, your business advisory board, whatever it is. There's a lot of fear that surrounds this. Fear is a, is a good thing, but at the same point in time, know when it is limiting your ability to move forward and get into a mindset for growth and for opportunity versus a mindset of fixed and this is the way it is or here's what I have to do. So don't let the big questions be daunting.
to wrap up the six lies, basically, if you're thinking big, if you're thinking different, and you're acting bold, you are encompassing the right ideas to be able to achieve whatever you want. Um, one of the things in this, this is the second part of the, the second portion, I guess the second section of the book, a series of chapters. And one of the first things that it talks about is our, it, it, it talks about our place in life and where are we at before we begin our, um, our journey of, of going through the next chapters that he's outlining. And one of the things that he says, and I hate to ruin it for you, but this is so pertinent. It's, he says, let go and unclench your jaw and your butt. Okay. So <laughs> right there, this can be a really, really hard topic. Just what we're talking about tonight, but think about your other business decisions and you're making big decisions about where you want to take family, your life, what do you want to have your legacy be in this world? Those are pretty big decisions and it's kind of, and, and so when what we're talking about tonight, if it brings up any of those things, just remember, take a deep breath, let go a little and hopefully we can jump right in. And the first part that I wanted to cover is we really have to think about our critical thinking skills. What is the question? What is the question that's going to help propel us forward? What is, what is it that we can do to be able to identify the resources that we need to basically clear the way and allow our brain the space it needs to let the critical thinking we're doing blossom into some really good ideas that we can use? All right, Scott. And it starts with one question, and Gary Keller has identified this question. What is the one thing I can do such that by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? And when we're thinking about that question, there are so many things that can apply to every part of our life. I mean, some of the lives we talked about in the last couple of plus two takeaways, like balance. So if I can't have equal balance of life and family, maybe what needs to happen is that, um, you know, what is the, what is that question? What is the one thing I can do so that everything will be easier or other things will be unnecessary for each area, my personal life, my business life, my contacts, your intention, can, not should, would, could, can, so, or will might be another word that you could use to think about. You're creating an intention and by doing that, you're giving yourself a foundational base that you can hold yourself accountable to. The second piece, such by doing it, this is, oh, something's going to happen. I'm going to not only have this foundation to work from, but I've got a place to go. Up, sideways, forward, backward, around, it doesn't matter what that path looks like. We may not know yet. But the idea of asking this question is that there is a path to be taken. And by asking this question, can we find the starting point on that path so we can take our first step? And then our second step with the least amount of course correction over time as possible. The third part, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. So if we're starting with that in mind, if we think back to the very beginning of the book with the domino experience, with, um, with the dominoes where a, a single domino can knock over, it has the power as it's falling over to knock down a domino twice its size, tw and then twice its size, and so there's a compounding effect. and I think a similar one is, you know, you start with a little stone and it might start rolling down a hill and then you have a snowball and then you have a ginormous snowball and then you have an avalanche. I think this is a little bit more controlled though when we think about dominoes and I like this domino stuff that um, Gary Keller uses because it's very specific. It's not like I'm going to get everything along in the way. It's each action that I take carries a, has a result that is going to launch me to that next place. And that's one of the reasons I really, really like this question. It's actually a really simple question. If you think about it, the simplicity of this question makes it one of the hardest questions. Because um, the secret to success is having the right questions asked. And if we're not using our critical thinking and we're not um, giving ourselves the space to learn and incorporate other information to make decisions that will allow us 
to find that answer to that one thing to propel us action to action, then we're really not propelling ourselves towards success. So if you're thinking about something that's a very broad goal or a very specific goal or a very big goal or a very small goal, then um, you know something to think about is that where those intersect in the topmost quadrant, that is going to be where you push and you stretch and it's measurable and you're going to go, oh, okay, this is beyond my skill set. This is beyond what I can do. I'm going to have to work really hard to make this happen. But I've got something that's, I've got a very specific path in mind and so things are going to lay themselves out because I'm doing the critical thinking, because I'm taking the actions and other questions will come along as I'm going along so that I can find the people that I need and the resources that I need to get me where I'm going in the time frame that I have set. So even within that big question, what is the one thing I can do such by doing it, everything else will be easier or unnecessary. That in and of itself, that's everything you need for a smart oriented goal. We're just turning it into the form of a question so we can think about it beyond a goal of our life or our family or our business, but we can have it be our overarching theme. And I, I, and I will speak for myself in this where the more that I practice this, the clearer my path becomes. And I can actually look at something and find out, okay, is, is it part of my one thing? Does it support the path that I'm on personally? And if it matches those two goals, then does it support whatever variants of life, family, work, friends, volunteer, church, all that good stuff, how all of that fits in together and how we set our priorities and work from a priority list instead of a to-do list. When we're thinking about the possibility piece, you know you've got something that's doable, you've got something that you can stretch, it might be uncomfortable because it's at the end of the skill set that we have, but then there's that breakthrough. Oh, I know where I need to go, I know how I'm going to change the world and I'm going to do it different and I've got this way and now this path is clear so what do you do? You go do it, reach it and dive right into that one Scott. Totally dive right into that. You've got to think about the, the possibilities because other people are having the same thoughts that we are. So if we're thinking really big and we are reaching out through those possibilities and we can find the thoughts that other people are having other paths will appear so we can take those trends and we can use them to complete our picture and start a new possibility and be there and give information and insight and ideas to something that other people can learn from to break out of their to break out of their comfort zone and achieve their possibilities be brilliant and that's and show that sparkle and that's really what the whole second part of the book is about and I have to tell you mm-hmm Every time, I, this is the third time I've read it in a couple of years, and every time I read it, I take away something new, or I go, oh yeah, I really got that the first time. How cool is that? Okay, so this one, this part of the, the section of the book really talks about a self-mission, if you will. So it walks you through how to create your purpose and think about your purpose so that you can understand what that overarching one thing might be, and then how do you ask the question, uh, how do you ask that qualifying question to determine which are the actions to take? And I love I love this this whole P thing. There's purpose, productivity. Excuse me, purpose, priority, and productivity. And really, your purpose is your compass. So once you understand what your purpose is, you now have a direction to go. And what that compass does is it guides you in the general direction so you can set your priorities for each of the areas that you are going to choose to pay attention to in your life at any one time. Well, one at a time, but there may be many priorities that you are switching your priority, your focus between, which drives the actions that we choose to get the best, the best results that will actually amplify and make easier the next the next set of actions we're going to take. So the whole idea of the one thing is what is the right action to take so that future actions are easier or unnecessary. So you're like clearing the way a little bit to get to this, to get to your priorities and stay in line with the direction of your compass.
The next part is to live by priority. We have to train our mind how to think. So once we know what our purpose is, how are we thinking about things and how are we really working on living in our priorities and honoring them and only them. And we've heard it everywhere else and he says it, Gary says it in this in the one thing as well. Once you've thought about it, you better write it down because once it's written, it's more real and you have concrete actions to take and measure against and so that's something that I always like to hear that one come up over and over again and in the end there is only one one thing there is only one direction on that compass of your life that you are going to follow uh, and make the progress that you want to make so if everything in the different parts of your life and the, the priorities that you have chosen all align with that one compass. So we'll use me as an example. I, um, my purpose is to help other people tell their stories effectively in whatever form that takes, connecting businesses to customers and the people within those businesses to those customers to build relationships. So that actually happens in my personal life too, which I thought was really interesting when I was really thinking about this. We live for productivity and we need a time management system. Whatever your time management system is, honor it, love it, live it. Uh, Gary is fond of time blocking and saying, you know what, whatever your one thing is for this day, so in your business, what is your one thing? And you're going to choose that one action within that one thing to drive forward momentum and you're going to do that first. He's a believer of doing your one thing first as well. So I'm a little bit more lenient we all have our own rhythm so we just have to find that time where the most creative and we have the ability to focus and whatever that is and however you block that time whether you have to put up a sign whether you have to put um, crime scene evidence tape around your office so nobody comes in whatever you have to do is what you need to do because it really is you and the actions that you take and the, the thought that you are putting into this. So to do, to protect that and keep working on your one thing, that would be vacation, personal days, mental health days, whatever you call them, take them. And uh, that also means that you do need time to review your planning. The, what you've done in the past and where you're going to make any adjustments that you need on any regular basis. And that takes us to the next piece, which is no matter what, we need to keep our eyes on our one thing because of how easy it is to be distracted, whether you have shiny object syndrome or some other distraction piece that something that distracts you easily, creative avoidance. I mean, when I'm really avoiding things, I clean. So you all know what it is. <laughs> you all know what yours is. Just identify it and know it so you can honor that. And don't double book yourself. One of the things is like, oh, maybe I can listen to a podcast while I do my one thing. Or maybe I can listen to the replay of a hangout while I do my one thing. Or maybe I can do my one thing while I'm watching a movie I wanted to catch up on. Bad idea because you really can't focus, you really can't take the time and energy it needs. Now there's a thing called um, being an, uh, moving from entrepreneur to productivity. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting, I've got to find this, going from E to P, because when we're an entrepreneur stage, this is like, I'm going to go to a, a lemonade stand, the lemonade stand that you might have. You're going to sell all the lemonade you can and you're going to earn that money. I mean, when my dad was a kid, he took his lawnmower and he would walk for five miles to mow people's lawns just so he could earn money. Realistically, um, he probably, you know, when you, so you get in that mood of being, mode of being an entrepreneur, entrepreneur and taking that action. And the example that he gives in the book is an entrepreneur will say, okay, I'm going to be in the yard for a while to cut down a tree because you asked me to cut down a tree. The person that's in productive mode is going to go, all right, let me think about this for a second. Oh, chainsaw, ta-da, and off they go to cut down their tree. So that's that breakthrough point is how do you, how, how do you actually stop being just acting all the time because you can and move into a place where you can step back and think so you can actually 
understand and embrace what an opportunity is to leap over where you're at to get you to that next stage and have the momentum to keep knocking down those dominoes that are twice as tall so you have a domino this tall and you have a domino twice as tall then you have a domino three times as tall and it's exponentially growing and your action will take you where you want it to go and so there are four thieves of pro productivity that Gary talks about that I think are worth spending a little bit a little bit of time. The first is being able to say no. The second is knowing that um, chaos exists and being afraid of it. The third one is poor health habits, and the fourth one is um, poor space design. So how are you using yourself in space? Are you eating well? And um, knowing that chaos and life happens and really being sacred with your time because every single time you say yes means you're saying no to something else and is what you're saying yes to supporting your overall one thing and is what you're saying so then in turn what you're saying no to is it out of line with your one thing and if they don't if they're not doing what you want them to do or you're saying yes to things that don't help you knock down your dominoes then you need to it's a good time during that planning period to revisit that so what's our journey we go back to the question, and this one zooms in, right? Yep. What's the one thing I can do such that by doing, everything else will be easier or unnecessary? It all starts with each one of us, the heart and the mind and the space that we create and how we show up. And that wraps up everything that we've talked about with the one thing in the book. So thank you very much for sharing a few minutes with us to talk about the one thing tonight.